Unfortunately, recording over our original intro for the interview with the lady herself, Miss Rain, aka Raining Sorrow, back in the day. Um, we unfortunately did not enjoy the quality of the original interview uh, yeah, intro. It was complete shit, bro. Yeah, it, it, it kind of was. It was. It was pretty bad. It was pretty bad. But we decided to actually take a moment to say a few thank yous and to give our appreciation to a few people who actually made this interview happen. First, a huge thank you to our interviewee, Miss Rain herself. Thank you very much for giving us the opportunity to interview you and enjoy this time with you guys. You're going to see how intelligent and awesome this girl is here in a few moments. Second, we want to thank Miss Rezzy Costa herself for making this interaction happen. Thank you so much thank for you, putting us in connection with Rain. And then, of course, shout out to the FFP, FFP Records, Records for always showing love to Rain and Easy Mill and the entire family that they got over there, man. Thank you guys so much. And we would be remiss not to mention, obviously, La, La Familia. Familia itself. Thank you guys and all our fans out in the Philippines. We appreciate you guys so much. You have no idea how much we love you guys. You've gotten us this far, and yeah. we're only going further. Hey. You definitely helped us during the journey from the hobby lifestyle now to the to CNN, CNN podcast. podcast. You have been there Since from day one. So I, we greatly appreciate you all. La Familia, we couldn't have done this without you. And I greatly appreciate, we greatly appreciate your patience as well because I know you waited a couple weeks to see this interview. I know you will enjoy this, guys. That's right. So we'll be done with the talk and we'll get straight to the interview, guys. Let's go. Um, it's a pleasure to have you here. Thank you so much for joining us on the CNN podcast and with La Familia. We're so glad to have you here. How has your day been going so far? It's been going pretty good. Uh, how about yours? It's been going pretty good. It's nighttime for us right now, so you know we're getting we're kind of getting ready to right. start cooling just, down after all this. Yeah, we just came from a family party, but we wanted to see Rain and interview you. So hey, thank you for giving us the time. And it's a pleasure to have you on the CNN podcast. That's right. Um, you know, we're it's a pleasure to have you. At, and we already interviewed Easy Mill, but today is your spotlight. So it's all about rain today. So without further ado, we're just going to jump right into it. We know, we, we know that you're a person who kind of gets to the point. So we're going to get to the point for you, too. Now, to start off, I really wanted you to take us through your creative process while writing a song. Oh, okay. So um, when it comes to writing a song, I actually, like... Um, I actually like to write the song while like singing the melody. I actually uh, kind of at the same time. So I'm like gonna be like, like uh, yesterday I actually just um, had a song idea, and I was like, da -da -da -da. and at the same time I did that melody. I was singing random words, and I somehow started to make those words rhyme. So basically I freestyle, like I freestyle, and then I'm like. I try to remember that freestyle, and then I write that freestyle down, and then I change little things according to what I like, what I like in a song. So like, it it's not a very uh, it's not a very long process. I can basically write a song in like thirty minutes to an hour, or if I'm if I'm like you know not if I don't have that much creative juice in my head, I'll only write like the chorus, and then I'll leave it off for a year, you know. <laughs> There's really not like much that I do in terms of writing the song. I mean, sometimes, sometimes the song will start with me like doing a chord progression on the ukulele the guitar, or I'll do like a little thing on the piano, and just like, Di -di 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 -di. and then I'll be like, oh, I'll sing along with that, and then I'll be like, ooh, bam, song, okay, banger, and then um, what's it called? Sometimes it'll just be words that I want to put into a song, so I'll write them down. Sometimes it'll just be the melody, and I'll sing the melody for years on end. And there was this one song that I wrote like a really long time ago, and the thing is, it started with this chord progression that I had on the guitar. I would always play that chord progression. I think I played that chord progression for like a few months before I actually started to get the words down. Yeah. I would, it was always just like a habit of mine. Like it, it became muscle memory. So every time I play guitar and just warm up, I play the chord progression. And now, since I've written the whole song to that chord progression, I, I sing the song at the same time. You know, it's easy warm up, I guess. Yeah. That's that's awesome. That actually kind of brings me to, like, the next part of this question. When when writing about a certain moment or emotion, 
is it best to start writing when you're still in like the raw feeling of that emotion or time? Or is it best to kind of wait and kind of process all those things and all those thoughts and then write about it? Okay, so every time I have a really strong emotion, it like it really depends on how like intense that emotion is. If the if the emotion is like like actually like it's it's causing me to like cry and causing me to like panic because I have a case of panic attacks when I like when I get to like when there's too much like anger or sadness or anything. If this is too much, I start like panicking and hyperventilating. And what's it called? Um, so when it goes to that, I can't do anything. I have to wait that out. But I will maybe write a song about it if I if it's still in my head and I'm like I'm still like in that moment. But when I'm not mm. in the zone, it's really like I don't have much of a incentive to write anything. But it usually comes in the most like emotional moment, especially if I really need like someone to talk to. There's nobody to talk to. I'm gonna talk to my phone. The paper. Okay. <laughs> I guess. Yeah. yeah. Of course. Yeah. All right. So, um, as you all know, coming from a musically talented family, when is the moment that made you decide that you wanted to do this as a as a career, music as a career? What what made you decide you wanted to pursue this? Ah, uh, that's a good question. Um, I think I don't think there ever really was a moment where I like like I was like, okay, I'm gonna do this for the rest of my life. I think it was always just being a part of the music and the music being a part of the family. It was always just like, I loved to sing. I loved to write. I, I actually started songwriting because of poetry. I used to be like a little mini uh, nine-year-old poet. And <laughs> I started, and then I turned that, and then I turned that poetry into the structure of a song. And then I sang that and I'm like, oh, I'm a oh. <laughs> I was gonna say that's that's pretty unique that you came from like just being a poetic or being you know you said something about pen and paper earlier you were a poet and then you actually became where you wanted to do this musically as well and then you were like yo I'm a songwriter now I actually <laughs> put more into context with the music with the beat and you do a phenomenal job I must I add I'm you do you so I, I love your songs and your vocal range and the way you just sing is so beautiful and then it's crazy because you're only like 17 years old so, you so you just it's it's, it's, a, it's, it's a long it's a long career ahead of you let me tell you i mean we, we can see it we can really see it in the future it's 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 amazing stuff like i said i, ha I have do that that mr astronomy song that that song is wonderful it's beautiful it gets me it makes me think about one thing I always talk about in music is that it has to make you feel something. It has to make you kind of remember a time to know that it's real music. And like when I listen to your song, Mr. Astronomy, I'm just like, I'm put into a happy place again. Like I think about times when I was just like, like younger and just having a good time and like everything was cool. Everything was butterflies and rainbows. And I'm just like, Dude, right. this is didn't, wonderful. We didn't have to worry about all these. Like, we have to worry about anything. All these problems you know what I'm saying? It's just a through. wonderful, it's it, a wonderful it, feeling it gives song. gives me a vibe of like, I'm in Hawaii. Oh yes, yes. Because the ukulele, like, yes. The ukulele. I was telling um Nick, I'm like, man, I don't know why this could. It kind of reminds me of a soundtrack from like, <laughs> I don't know, Fifty First Dates, maybe because it's in Hawaii. I don't know if you ever seen the movie. Adam, Adam Sandler. Sandler and Drew Barrymore. I mean, we're kind of dressed for the right. occasion, I think, I think right? I feel like we're kind of riding you know, <laughs> the right, the right attire for Hawaii. And then not only that, you come from a musical background, you know, whereas your father, Paul Shapiro. Uh, rock band, superstar, easy mill, you know, um, multi-talented, and then yourself as well. When I saw Storm on uh, the Wish Bus, you, Dude, oh my goodness. yeah, that was awesome. You took us by, by storm, for real. Yeah. <laughs> you took us by storm. Hey, man, let me tell you, we're still in the yeah. same storm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> I can't sing, so I'm going to have Nick sing, because he's a little no. better than me. A little, little bit. bit. But Rain, we ain't, I'm getting on your level. Let's be exactly. honest. Exactly. <laughs> and honestly, that brings me to my next question, because I've always wondered, like, you're being so young and always traveling across countries, what are some ways that you find a balance between being a traveling artist and still being a teenager and still want to live a normal life? Um, I, I don't really, in, in, in the term, like, what do you mean by normal teenager? I guess like more on the lines of like, you know, you have kind of like this, 
his dedication, this, 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 uh, this amazing call to music where it's kind of brought you, like you said, like, you know, like we said, we've seen you in Las Vegas and we, you know, you kind of are traveling along with your brother and you're really kind of getting into this huge, you know, limelight sort of a thing, you know, it's how do you, do, do you feel like it's changed your life at all from like anybody else around you or is it kind of, or do you feel like you're still just, you're still just you? Yeah. Um, what's it called? I, I do. I mean, I've always grown up with the traveling thing. My family's always been traveling since I was a little kid. So what's it called? Um, we would always travel and it just, it just was a part of life really. So I never really thought of it as anything like different now, like that we're touring. I, I just see this as I'm, I'm home. Yay. And um, oh, yeah. um, when it comes Congratulations, to, by the way. thank you. When it comes to, what's it called? When it comes to uh, things like, let's say my social life, I don't, I've never really had much of a social life to begin with. I've always kind of kept to myself, uh, especially, especially since the start of my teen years, I would, I can't, I kind of became a recluse. I would really, I never really go outside because I mean, I, I kind of feel like everything that I need is already here. Like I don't require a lot of, what's it called? friend interaction to be honest social interaction tires me out i guess you can call me an introvert but uh what's it called i've you're always... a hermit <laughs> yeah i'm a hermit <laughs> you're a hermit there's no shame in that i'm a hermit too yeah what's it called um yeah and i just i kind of wake up i play video games and then i'll i'll do something productive in the day and that's kind of how my days go and spend some time with my family hug my mom hug my my other reds hug kuya sometimes if he lets me but um <laughs> <laughs> you know, that's kind of always been my life and when i do go outside i think it's only when like back in vegas i would go outside sometimes if kuya asks me to go with him somewhere you know skate somewhere like swim somewhere you know, just do things that are healthy for us because in terms of what's it called? Uh, physical, longevity. Yeah, physical health and longevity. We're not really doing great in that department. We're kind of really <laughs> unhealthy on the side a little bit. I'm a little bit uh, not, you know, not a little bit underweight. And then Kui is a little bit underweight, I think, too. And we're both kind of really skinny children so we need to build some muscle we need to eat some more food you know stuff like Definitely. that worry, you gotta eat some adobo chicken or something yeah, man you gotta, you gotta start throwing it down you gotta throw it back you know i love adobo we tried max's restaurant out here in chicago and i would say we recently tried so uh panoy street food too panoy out here in chicago food. too oh, yeah my goodness the food was so delicious it was if you ever come to chicago Last I had house. squid for the food. first time i had squid for the first time and it was actually phenomenal it was beautiful it was wonderful What's what's Max's? I've heard of it and I've seen it before, but like what? Okay. So it's, it's like a, more like a mainstream. It's like authentic, like, yeah, uh, Filipino, Filipino food. food. Oh, it's Filipino food. I yeah, it's a yeah. chain, I think, also in I the Philippines. Like they ask you how you are, you just have to say that you're fine when you're not really fine, but you just can't get into it because they would never understand. <laughs> She's like, why are you talking to me about a dance right. spot, bro? Like, I don't. I, I don't care. I don't care. My mom, all right? Exactly. Uh, I mean, Max is like the most universal, like, name ever. You can literally have a Max from any culture everywhere. Like, there's not much uh, of a difference. But that's fact. Just some regular white guy name. I don't know. Yeah, <laughs> true, true. Since we are on the topic of family, right, besides your family, what would you say some of – who are some of your idols that inspired your music? Oh, definitely Cape Town. <laughs> Who was that? Cape Town. Cape Town, okay. Cape Town, okay. Yeah. Wow, um, okay. I would say in terms of like in terms of any music standard, he is like my my favorite artist of all time. He's been my favorite artist of all time for like three, four years now. And I, I can definitely see that not stopping. Like, uh, what's it called? Every single song that he's ever made, I've listened to and I've loved. It's like maybe one or two songs that I'm like not the biggest fan of, but like most of his music, I'm just like, give me more, you know? 
That's how I feel about you and uh, Easy as well. Give me more. Yeah. Yeah. Give me more, Ray. Give me more Easy. I need both of them. <laughs> I feel like a lot of fans feel like that too. All right, I'm not the only one. Trust me. Okay, yeah, we, I mean, we, yeah, we can't get enough of you guys. I mean, everyone's been talking to us. Like when you do the album review, we're like, when it releases. Like, what are you talking about? <laughs> Um, no, yeah, definitely. Um, so Cape, Cape Town, is there any other artists that uh, you want to say that inspired your music besides? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, another another big inspiration I've had, like, for a really long time, like, since since kind of she blew up, I would say Billie Eilish. Like, she, I, I used to listen to her, like, I used to be her, like, number one fan. Like, ever, like the moment a song dropped, I would be there. Like, 15 seconds ago, the song dropped. I was, I already listened to it. You know what I just thought about? As weird as it is, a like you, you kind of relate to Billie Eilish because, for example, Billie Eilish, right? She's an amazing singer, one of ours. I agree completely with what you're saying about her. She's a phenomenal artist, but her brother does most of her production and helps with. Yes, music. now I've actually evolved from that. The funny thing is, um, I've actually kind of learned how to produce my own songs and kind of do everything myself a little bit. Yeah, and, there you go. Hell yeah. But it's be easy uh, level number two, I guess. Yeah, <laughs> progression is key, and so it's, it's, it's amazing to hear that that you're you're learning how to produce your own music, and you know, yeah. I guess be more independent in your own you know way. So yeah. that's good, and I see it. We see it. it it's definitely, definitely different. Without and, a doubt, uh, I love it. I love it. It's like a tar alternative rock. Uh, and I do see a, a, some Billy Eilish um, inspiration. influences. Yep. Definitely, he was what? Oh, there was another song we listened to earlier today too. Where we were just like, yo, I'm, I like because he told me he was like. Oh, she reminds me of Billie Eilish. Or yeah, and I was like, no, she reminds me more of like honestly, like punk rock, like kind of more new age rock and stuff like that. Like it's like you have a really cool like mixture yeah. of that kind of stuff, you know? Like for example, I, like I wouldn't even call Mr. Strano more indie, you know? It's more indie rock yeah. than anything else. Yeah, definitely. and yeah, and then like he showed me the song he was talking about, and I was like, oh man, you know what? I low key hear it. I was like, it's a little bit more techno, a little bit more like that. I was like, okay, cool. I'm like, I, I see it. I can see it. So it's funny that you actually bring that because he was think, telling me about it earlier. I think he you was also just, brought it up when we, uh, when we watched her, at, when we watched Rain at the, at the, the Las Vegas. Las Vegas. Mm -hmm. No, at, uh, also the, the virtual concert. I Correct. think you were, the, it was the first thing that was like, oh man, <laughs> that gives me Billie Eilish vibes. So Hey, that's, that's all. Right. Yeah, it was definitely you. <laughs> yeah, it good. definitely was. But uh, today I did say that. I'm like, yeah, it does re it does re uh, remind me of Billie Eilish. But you got your own flavor as well. Because you you're really versatile. Mm -hmm. Like, you're really, like like I said, you have, you give me, like, these punk rock vibes. You give me, like, these, you know, like, like emo rock vibes. And, like, still indie. Soulful. Like, it's really, you're really, you're you're just versatile as an artist. And, that, and I think that's honestly the best thing to be because it kind of gives you so much more ways to express yourself and really kind of get into what you want to say and how you want to say it, you know? Yeah, what's it called? Um, I, like, I like. it's so funny, because my Spotify playlist, like, my favorite Spotify playlist, my favorite songs of all time, I call that in all caps. And what's uh -huh. it called? I, like, I notice how some, like, the, the transitions to songs are so, like, drastic. Like, I'm listening to a Nirvana song, right? Like, and I'm like blasting it in my ears, and then the next second I'm just playing like this chill, this chill, like the Japanese house song. That's like super sad, <laughs> super chill. And then I, I listen to Vocaloid, and then it's just like blasting again. And then it's just yep. like, like I will listen to anything as long as like, like I, I try, I've tried like majority of like all like, and then Kui as well. All the songs that he likes, he'll blast it in the car and. I, we all like like ninety percent of them. So like I've listened to like that. What's that genre where it's all? It's like so. Is it like like blues or something? I'm not sure, but it's like uh. Blues. Yeah, kind of like the the genre where it's just like these women and like men who like sing like so sweetly and like subtly and like what's it called? Kind of like. You know, it, it brings you along, like, dun, 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 dun. like blues, you know? blues yeah. bluegrass, jazz, that's all that kind of, like, Ella Fitzgerald, Louis Armstrong, all that kind of stuff, that'll really yeah, get you. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Like, Michael Bublé and, like, Madeleine K. Rue. Like, I, like, I love them. And what's yep. it called? One of my newest uh, favorite artists. Uh, I don't remember her name. Dang it. <laughs> but... Uh, anyways, like, it's just, it's crazy how, like, a lot of my influences, like, 
will change the song that I write. Like, what's it called? One of my songs called Dysthymia. It was, it's like, it's like this kind of rap, like pop rap mix thing. It's like, yeah, it's, it's like, like a rap song. And it's so strange because like the entire time I was writing that song, like the entire like area of that time, I was like, I would listen to Eminem. I would listen to Hobson. I would listen to like, like a lot Ooh. of rap in that time. So my yeah. song like went to like bars and I was just like, <laughs> I, I'm, I'm rapping, but I'm singing. This is cool. <laughs> it's melodic rap. That's melodic rap at its yeah. finest, you know? And a lot of people can't do that because it's hard to be able to not only have the breath control to rap, but also to sing it at the same exact time. So that's always an impressive feat. I mean, you know, shoot, kudos to you for that, for real. Thank you. Of course. Um, we kind of, you kind of, just, just to bring this back a little bit, you kind of touched up on it like a little bit earlier, but I kind of wanted to get a little bit more of a bigger perspective on it with my next question. And, and that's kind of in terms of dealing with writer's block. How or what are some of the techniques that you use that help you kind of get back into your flow or get those creative juices flowing again? Oh, I don't. <laughs> I, I, <laughs> what's it called? When I when I when I'm not in the when I'm not in the zone anymore, when I lose like that creative juice, I I don't try to force it. Like I I literally just I just let it I just let myself kind of go off in a different direction. Like if I'm if I'm writing a song and then I suddenly feel the urge like and then I suddenly feel like I don't, I can't write anymore. And then I'm just like, okay, I, I just like flip, flip my phone to YouTube, just start watching YouTube videos. Like I, I, stop, I stop caring about it. And then I'm just like, and then I'll have like another ping moment, you know? Yeah, of course. You allow yourself to actually live your life and allow the music to come to you as opposed to going yeah. and chase it. That's a yeah. wonderful thing. That's beautiful. Yeah. Thank yeah. You. I feel like that's, that's the best way to be creative too. Like you don't want to, just over you want to drain yourself you want to pull yourself, out of yourself exactly. what what may not what may not be ready to come out you know mm -hmm. it's sometimes you have to kind of like you just have to live life watch a youtube video relax and you might just be watching yeah. YouTube and you're like yo that hits me now like it just hits different yeah. sometimes you know um and one thing i did want to touch bases on um was the name change so like i know i when i first reacted to you uh you were raining sorrow now i believe you go by rain so I want I want to know what was the particular reason why you changed the name, if you don't mind me asking. Oh yeah, no, no, it's fine, it's fine. I thought it was cringe. I <laughs> said really the. <laughs> I love her. Whoa. Like, <laughs> it's it's real. Yeah, it's real. Cringe. <laughs> yeah, really. The thing is, like, I named myself Raining Sorrow when I was twelve. I was twelve oh. at the time. I was a little baby. I had the red hair phase. I loved wolves. I was like, I was like on the treasures of being a furry dude. I was like, I, was I love really, wolves. I was What's really, cute? Really, the really over there. I was, that, I was in that like, I was in that itchy moment. I was like, I was like, I'm so sad. I'm so emo. <laughs> like, leave me alone, mom. God. Yeah. Yeah. It's like, I had that phase. I was hey, I was a skater boy, so I had that face too. I was too edgy for everything, you know what I'm saying? I'm like, dude, that's lame, bro. <laughs> you know, I was like, hey, it's, it's radical. yeah, exactly. I was like, oh, mom, you wouldn't understand. Like, oh, my heart yeah. is so big. Like, yeah, no. I feel like we all, go, we all go through those phases without a doubt. Without you know, a doubt. Um, I had a face. It wasn't like that. I mean, it was more of a, a baggy jean face. Yeah, where I'm with rubber bands in my pants. <laughs> it wasn't no emo or anything like that, but I, I, I had baggy jeans, like jeans that were double the size of what I should be wearing. You know, like and this is why me and him didn't hang out in high school. This is why we hang out in high school back in the day because he was doing that, and I was doing a whole other thing. <laughs> I was in band we're, class, we're, all right. That's we, what I was, I was doing. Just, yeah. See, the thing is, that was like grammar school, like fifth grade. Yeah. And, and then when I went to high school, I actually wore my size jeans. Um, I wore more fitted stuff, and uh, you know, I went from uh, I don't know, I don't know what my name was at the time, <laughs> so just Christian, right? I am Christian. That is me. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, hey, that's awesome. I, I I definitely wanted to know what also was the the meaning behind rain. Is there a meaning behind that now that it changed? Or is it just less cringe, right? Uh, so I love rain, as you can probably tell um what's it called but i also i also love to be called ray like i i like that name a lot um 
and what's it called? All of my friends call me Ray, and like a lot of people that I've never met, I ask them to call me Ray instead of Ruth because I'm just like, you know, it's a, it's a, it's, it's I, a nickname. I, I, it's like when I look when I look at Ray, I see grandmas specifically. Like I see baking <laughs> cookies, I see knitting, I see cats. Like, oh, reading a book. A grandma Ruth made you some cookies. Why don't you try? Like, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I think of that, and so I just like, I just like, I'm like, I don't want, I don't want people to call me. I don't want people to call me. And like, the thing is, when I was named Ruth, people would constantly like, people would constantly tease me. They're like, Oh, come on, Grandma Ruth. Like hurry up, oh, you know, like no. that. It wasn't bullying or anything. Cause we were all friends. It was all jokes and stuff. But I got annoyed by it really easily. So it's just like, I was just like, what about the name? What about like I have a I have an original character named Raylin, and like her nickname is Ray. And I was like, I was like, the name, that's the name. It like it like golden gold sparkles. And I'm just like, yes, do that. That's my name now. My name is Ryan. <laughs> well, and we do yeah. love the name Rain. Um, it's a wonderful it's name. It's unique. It's definitely very And unique. honestly, you're not a roof or, you know, however you think. So, in your, in your from now on, you're Ray to us. You're Ray. You're Ray. That's it. You're Ray. Yeah. Wait, is it, so do you like the nickname Ray? Like R-A-Y or R-A-Y-N? Like Ray. Rain. R-A-Y. Yeah. Just R-A-Y. R-A-Y. Oh, Ray. For yeah. sure. Ray you're Ray to us now. Official. It's official. Uh, We're stamping yeah. it. A lot of people get to call you Ray now. That's official. It's done. It's over with. Oh, we have to give her approval for it. Oh, is it cool? <laughs> yes. Yes. It's okay, cool. All right. Cool. Ray. Yay. Ray. It's Ray. Ray. Yeah. Official. Now. Let me do reaction videos. We call her Ray. And then we'll be like, well, Exactly. Well, this is Ray. We'll be like, our friend Ray is because he has a brand new song, you know? I think now at this point, now that we're kind of goofing around and having fun, we're going to kind of push this over to a little bit more of our fun questions, fun segment for you. Just a few questions for you. Um, you know, answer however, however you feel, however you feel. I think this next one, I think these next two, I kind of already kind of know where they're going. Um, but if you could collab with any artist or musician from any point in time, any point in time, who would it be and why? Um... Every indie artist that I love, uh, Kate Chan, uh, Chloe Moriando. Um, like, you know, I love indie to the bottom of my heart. It's my favorite genre of all time, like bedroom pop. And I would love to collab with the Japanese house there. And uh, what's it called? Uh, I would also love to collab with like Moira de la Torre uh, because like her voice is just absolutely beautiful. And I just love, would love to like. Oh, yeah, Moira. 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 Yes. Explain. <laughs> <laughs> I was, uh, what's it called? Moira, Mo, Mo, Moira de la Torre is, uh, is a, uh, what's it called? A Filipino the artist. The queen of sad music in the Philippines. Yeah. I can like, see she's a fan too. <laughs> she, she just has like, a absolutely beautiful voice and it's just it's so it's like every time you hear her you just you just have to feel like that beautiful sadness you know it's just like oh yeah so, like yeah i love to kind of do a thing where i sing along with the artists and like and harmonize with them so like you know with kuya like if he'll sing a song i'll sing the song i'll sing the same song but in like different notes to match with him and it like sounds great and i like doing that so like i would like to i would absolutely love to do that with moira and you know just kind of have a lot of fun just as you know singers and just kind of bond on that definitely that's awesome for sure i mean i i, I was surprised i never i never heard of the moira yeah moira i'm not gonna lie moira I'm not, Mo, moira 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 no, I'm saying de la wrong, torre man. come on now moira, moira you're, 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 you're puerto riqueño moira si moira i know i'm mexicano, mexicano. And, and we have this discussion right now we do this <laughs> <laughs> but um I, I was surprised you didn't say billy eilish because i know that was one of your inspirations so well, I love Billy, but in terms of like just like singing, like we're we're really similar. Like there's yeah. not much of a difference in terms of like the styles of like singing that we do. So I would say like in, like and she's kind of like when when I hear a song of hers, you don't hear like you don't hear like much of like this, like harmonizing or anything like that. And all of her True. songs, it's kind of, it's kind of her harmonizing with her brother Phineas, who's on like a lower harmony. 
And so mm-hmm. like, I, I'm, I am an alto, but I know that she's probably an alto too. So it's just like, I don't have much, like, I would maybe love to write a song with her, with her brother Phidias. The thing is with Phidias, I love him a lot more than his sister now. Like, cause like I learned that he's the mastermind behind everything. I learned yeah, that. Yeah, he really is. And like, yeah, he's the one producing. He's the one writing most of it. And like, it's like, like I, like I've loved every one of his songs. When I like clicked on his profile, I like listened to the first song, and I was just like, yeah, like completely mesmerized. And then I just listened to everything on his discography, and I'm just like, yes. Yeah. He hit and then the new album dropped, and I just lost my mind for every single song. Yeah. You know, it's, uh, I don't know if you know this about Phineas, but he actually, so for the song, I think it was Bad Guy. I think it was Bad Guy. He, bad he's, guy. this is how like crazy this guy, like, and I, and I feel the same way about Phineas as you do, because like, I think he's, I, I really think he's phenomenal. He really is, he can find music anywhere. And an example of that is like, I was saying in Bad Guy, the hi-hats, it's like this cool, like sound, right? But he actually got that from when him and Billy were in Australia and when you click the button to walk across the street, right? Um, you know, they, you know, have something they have the countdowns in yeah. Australia. It'll do that beat. It'll go, and there's an actually episode. I think it was like the Tonight Show or the or the Late Show, one of the one of the shows here in the states where he gave that explanation. And like he like he actually played the audio of that, and then he played the song, and you were like, "What the." Like you were just yeah. fucking blown mind away because of how crazy it was. Like. You were just like, what the fuck, man? Like, this guy's crazy. Yeah. What's it called? You know when that? Uh, I watched a video about Phidias, like, kind of him explaining, like, how he produces and stuff. Like, uh, and he told, and he told, like, the people that he was talking to that he would, like, he would record, like, anything. He'll literally record, like, he'll just go outside and he'll just press the record button. And, like, it, he puts that in, like, his songs, and it's just so, it, it's so cool. And, like, I want to yeah. do that, but I'm forgetting, which is really stupid. It's all right. It happens. It happens to the best of us. It's no big deal. I'm sure, I mean, Phineas is obviously clearly older than Billy. I'm sure it took him a long time to actually get to that point where he was like, you know what? I'm just going to do this. I'm just going to commit to it. Like, um, I think it's, a, I think Kanye said where if you, like, you made, if you made a song, like, every day for a year, 365 songs every day for a year, I think he's only like uh, he, he said he said you wouldn't every single one wouldn't be a hit, but he said at least like fifty or a hundred of them would would definitely be like magic. Where he's like, if you just keep doing it every single day, at a certain point, it's gonna become a thing where it's gonna be like almost second nature to you, and it's not even gonna be a thing you think about. Yeah, but keep doing it, dude. Record record those birds out in the Philippines and let us hear that album because I want to <laughs> hear it. All right, sweet sounds of rain in the Philippines. You know what I'm saying? Oh. Ooh, what? No. Okay. New album name? What? Uh, no. Sounds of Rain. This is an EP or what? <laughs> I don't know. We're gonna find out later when she when she releases it. No. <laughs> All right, Rain. So um, I need you to like visualize this question, right? So you're at a concert, right? You just killed your performance, and the fans are saying encore, encore, encore. What would be that encore song of yours? Um. I'm not sure. Uh, I mean, like in terms of like all the songs I've released. Hmm. Hey, Maybe you still Mr. release? Mr. Astronomy, probably. It's I like told you. <laughs> I knew it. I knew it. And I said it earlier. I, obviously, by the joy you see right here, Nick likes to be right. <laughs> I, I told you, Chris. I, I told you in the car. He, she was going to say that. She was going to say that. Yes, she was. I just, I feel like that's such a good like <laughs> song to end on because it's such like a positive note song, yeah, it and it would make the entire yeah, concert be like they would like it's like a sing along song. It's like put your hands up yeah, in the air and really sing along good. to this like, baby, especially, like, like especially how I go, oh, like oh, exactly, like, 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 like dude, like that gave me such punk rock vibes. Like I was like, because the guitar comes in and it starts getting grungy. I was like, yeah. what the, what is going on here? I'm like, this is amazing. Uh, so I'm very happy you gave that answer. Thank you very much. But elaborate. Well, I mean, you just elaborate on <laughs> I, I, I was gonna say I thought she was gonna say like Storm or even the the you know Black Sea, you know. But uh, dude, yeah, Mr. Astronomy. The only that's the only option. Only option there, man. Only in option. Terms of, like in terms of all the songs that I've released, um, I actually like like 
I, I perform Storm a lot. It's it's like everybody's favorite. So I'm just like, I wanna like switch it up a little. And uh what's it called? Mystery Astronomy is like one of the one of my favorite songs that I've released. It, it probably is my favorite song that I've released. Because it's mm. just like so it's so fun. It's so fun to do. There's like it's it's such a it's such a blasty, you know, kind of song. Yeah. Like it's a headbanger kind of song. And you can yes. none of my other songs you can headbang on. Like Black Tea is great, but it's not loud. Storm is loud, but it's not headbanging. And you know, it's like this is trying to be like, I want a song where I can be like, oh, 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 oh. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Yeah. It's like, yes. Like, I want to Jump them to the amp, you know what I'm saying? Definitely. I want to. Yeah, I got you. Hold on. <laughs> <laughs> hey, hey, Nick's trying to definitely you. match the vibes. <laughs> I got the vibes. I got the vibes. Don't worry. I got the headbanging hair and everything. I'm saying, yeah, you for sure got the same, color, uh, same like kind of hair. Oh yeah, curly, yeah, definitely, curly, dude. You know? Without a doubt, it's it's the only way to go. You know what I'm saying? Curly hair, or nothing. No, it's, and what what the Joe Coy say? That's why Mexicans and Filipinos was relate. relate. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, there you go. <laughs> um, that brings. Okay, you kind of. I'm pretty sure I heard you say it. I wrote it down because I was like, oh, I think this is what it is. So I noticed on your Instagram that you like anime, and I particularly really like the drawing you did. Of you, Easy. I'm not sure the third person was, but you and Easy and a and Easy was Ed and Yeager. That was super dope. I love Attack on Titan. But I wanted to ask you if you created an anime, which I may think you did, talking about Ray Lynn earlier. What kind of anime would you create, and what's the opening scene? You're actually really, you're actually really on point, which is. <laughs> <laughs> um, what's it called so yes i am like trying to kind of like make a manga kind of make a story and um what's it called yes yeah, really part of that um uh, what's it called wait real I quick just real quick just real quick i i, I want to just do a, a metaphorical mic drop real fast fire fire <laughs> <laughs> pick up your mic <laughs> what's it called? but continue um, please talk about this anime i want to hear all about it i love anime I'm super into it. When you have it on Webtoons, let me know. I'll go follow. I'll go read, without a doubt. Okay. So uh, it's a story called Pale Blood. And um, what's it called? It uh, It's basically kind of like, I, I've never watched, like, I've watched a ton of anime, but I've never actually seen, like, this kind of, like, genre. Because it's kind of like shonen. It's basically a shonen, but it's girls. Like, the three main characters are just girls with one that's kind of not really a girl, but also not really a boy kind of thing. Definitely. They're weird, you know? They, you know? Yeah, they're their own thing. But, they're on <laughs> What's it called? Uh, so, it follows the story of my main character, Lucid, um, who is homeless. And is kind of sitting on this like alleyway of the city called Farther. And I thought that was a cool name. I don't know. I just did that one day and I was like, that's a cool name. I'm putting that on. Yeah. But uh, what's it called? Uh, it's it's in a city where uh, God is a like God is a physical entity and the devil is a physical entity. And everything, every mythical creature that humans have come up with is a physical entity, and everything is real. And uh, what's it called? Like real, real. Like you can, you can touch. Touch it, like, yeah. You know, you can, you can clip off an angel's wing, and basically sell it on the black market, and stuff like that. And oh, show. Sure. The thing is, the thing is, angels and demons and all the stuff like that—they're just normal people in this like world. There's, there's nothing special about them. Like, the only thing special about, like, them is that they can fly. But the thing is, in the city, you're not really allowed to fly. So angels are kind of, like, the thing is, humans are at the top of the chain. They are the rulers of this, like, thing. And, like, you'd think that, you'd think that God and, like, angels and all that, they would be the rulers of it all, you know? You'd think that. But in this world, humans are the top. And they're oppressive, and they are controlling, and they will do anything to keep their power. So it's like super cool. There's like a lot going on. It's just like you know, it's really fun. It's really fun to explore the ideas of what if every, what if you could control, like, what if you could control the top and like humans, like you know, they're already in this society and like especially like America, they're super, yeah. you know, there's like a lot going on with the government and corrupting and 
every every government of like all the like, humans on planet Earth. There's a lot of corruption going on, a lot of evil people. And just like kind of exploring that part of society, the darkest part of like the human mind and the darkest part of mm-hmm. the human heart. And kind of exploring that. And the thing is our main character, she's not she's not human. She's an angel and a demon. So she's kind of she's illegal. She's not allowed yeah. to be she's not allowed to be alive. Um, in this society, humans force a law upon all of the kind of creatures. You can't mix races. Like, mm. if you're a human, you have to conceive a Stick child. With human. Yeah. You can't mix and match because that's too powerful and the humans will be toppled over. And Ooh. they're scared of that. So they don't want that to happen. So they force the law onto all the other creatures. You're not allowed to do that. And if you do that, we will kill you. And it's super dark. And I absolutely just like the main characters on the run from the law, trying to like, you know, pretend that she's just a regular angel, just a regular, you know, just like everybody else. And nothing special, nothing, nothing illegal here. And the other two main characters, Raylan, is also a mix of a demon and a animage which is basically kind of if, if you guys have read harry potter or watched harry potter kind of mm-hmm. like a and eh, i forgot the term for it like lupus lupin yeah lupus, lupin professor lupin the guy who can turn into a werewolf yeah but, okay he, he's a yeah. l- lycanthrope that, werewolf. He's, a werewolf. he's a werewolf yeah what's it called uh just a person who can who has the powers of a certain animal an animator is basically a person who can turn into a specific animal can't turn into any other animals just the one animal that they're kind of born with and the yeah. thing is animators are also special within all the races in the world because they also have they also have to be pure you can't mix a red wolf with a gray wolf you know? Oh. So there's there used to be clans part of those, and that's where one of the other main characters comes in, uh, Storm and Raylan. Raylan first. Let's take Storm out of the picture first. Um, let's go Raylan. Back to Raylan. Uh, she is from a noble family. Uh, well, that's actually spoiling. Uh, anyways, you can. Ah, no, uh, cut this. So Raylan is basically a uh, what's it called? She's a jackal. Um, so her anime power is turning into a jackal, but she's also a demon, so she's a jackal demon kind of thing. And it's cool, well, like Anubis, but, yeah, basically, Anubis That's kind, fine. Of kind, of, kind of thing. And that also gives a little bit of foreshadowing. And what's it called? Uh, and then we go to Storm, which is the third main character, kind of the first. The second main character that you meet in the story, because while Lucid is homeless, she actually meets Storm and they have an interaction, and that's kind of how the story starts. And um, what's it called? Storm is a gray wolf animage. Oh, wait, no, I changed her story. Yeah, she's not a gray wolf animage anymore. She's actually a she's a she's an extinct Japanese wolf animage. I forgot the I forgot the specific name. But she's a she's a Japanese wolf. But the Japanese wolf in real life is actually extinct. And yeah. uh, what's it called? She she has a really like st- like stupidly cool backstory, which I made like I think a month ago. Um, what's it called? Because these characters, I've made them. They've been alive for a really long time. They I've made them for a really long time. But. Uh, the backstories of just kind of, especially storms, because I was I was I was hoping to keep like storms I like uh, backstory a secret. The storm doesn't have a full name. Both Lucid and Raylan have full names, but Storm is only Storm. That no no nothing no last name no middle name no nothing no family ties. And I was hoping to keep it that way and me to be like you know I don't know anything. What are you talking about? But I do know yeah. something. Well, a lot now. And um, what's it called? I, I want to like, I kind of want to expand on the characters and like the story because like the premise is like so just so fun to like, kind of play around with like these political these like like personal like relations and all the things that could happen all of like 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 
this this world is like a horrible dystopia kind of reality and it's like i love dystopias so much like they pretend they're perfect but it's like a ton of you know bloodshed a ton of you know keeping everyone alive you can't you can't you can't be above anybody but we are actually above you yeah perfect pyramid and, scheme type stuff yeah and it's like i love i love those kind of stories and just exploring because what's it called i come from i come from like a very religious family and like i am christian as well and what's it called i like i learn about like like learning about angels learning about demons and i just realized that the religion itself is so complex and so like so cool it's so cool like all of like the there's like like there's demonology books and there's like there's 12 princes or nine princes of hell and it's just like yep. it's so complex and then like the angels they they're just like their eyes with like rings and like six wings and it's like yo they look so cool like those characters like those those designs like you can put them on a character and just like, it's just so unique and so like not it's so freaking mystical and like you're talking fun. about the book of enoch that's what's crazy you're talking about the book of enoch and that's actually yeah. part of, that's yeah that's you may want to look that it's up like, it's easy part of the bible you may want to look that up it's a really good part where it talks about the intricacies of heaven and it was this guy who apparently was the father of moses who christian as well raised in a very religious family mm -hmm. i'm very much kind of on the same tidbit as you where i kind of like really like to dive into like the real like craziness of what religion is and kind of like how you can really see like the intricacies of what it actually is. But yeah, the book of Enoch is a really great book. It, um, it's the father of Moses. He was actually was taken up to heaven and was kind of shown heaven. And he actually breaks down like the different hierarchies of, of angels. And like, what, the, like you said, there's different angels that look like you, like you have the lower ends, which are kind of the ones that are like you said, like the, the rings with eyes and wings. And then you have the archangels, which are like Michael and Gabriel, who are the ones who are more in like a humanistic form, I guess you can kind of say. But dude, this, and back to this anime though, really quick, what is the name? Well, what, cause I got, I got, I got the three main characters, Lucid, Raylan, and Storm. But what's the name of this anime so I can make sure to keep an eye out for it when it comes out? Cause this sounds, phenomenal like i am so glad to ask this question because i'm a huge anime fan and everything that you're saying is making me be like this is about to be fire like fire as all get out so what's the name uh it's called pale blood and uh, pale blood that you said it earlier that's right pale blood pale fire. blood Man, y'all making me want to get into anime. Like, I'm, I'm, like, I'm just like listening to y'all yeah 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 <laughs> like i've been saying i okay every Every artist that we have interviewed thus far, besides maybe a few, I'm not going to say any names, but y'all been into anime, and I feel like I'm left out of the loop, and yeah. <laughs> anime is key. Uh, I'm just like, I, okay. I'm trying think, to get an understanding of what's going on here. <laughs> I think in terms of starting anime, I think you should really just explore a specific anime genre that like you like in actual like, regular TV shows. Like, let's say, like, what's your favorite TV show? And, like, you look at the genre of that, and then you take that into anime, and you just kind of watch those, uh, anime in that genre, see yeah. how you look. That's the thing. Everything relates to sports. <laughs> he doesn't really watch TV. He watches sports. There's sports oh, anime, though. There's, 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 like some really good... yeah, there's a lot of good sports anime. Like, yeah. And, like, the, the basketball one's one of my favorites. I can't remember the name of it. The basketball see, one, I though, need, that's a good one. I need one. to find that anime, because then I would actually watch it. Dude, the Prince of Tennis was a really good old school okay. sports anime. Prince well, of Tennis was phenomenal. I I'm going that. to look up is it on Netflix? Is it on Hulu? Like Crunchyroll, probably. Okay. Yeah. True. I don't have. Are you that. talking about yeah. Kuroko's basketball? <laughs> what was that? Kuroko's basketball. Are you talking about that one? That's the one I'm talking about. And I now I'm talking about. Go ahead. Go ahead. What's it called? Uh, my favorite sports anime is Haikyuu, definitely. <laughs> I love volleyball. It's a good one. It's the, it's the volleyball one, right? Yeah. Yeah. It's, like, it's, it's just phenomenal animation, like, especially when they're actually playing the games, like, <gasps> you know, it's like, they anime fight so much. It's, it's so dramatic, but it's so cool. It's, like, awesome, yeah. Yeah, my, my I was going to say my anime is Space Jam, bro. That's not even <laughs> 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 That's my anime, bro. <laughs> He's gonna make Shrek, a Disney movie. Shrek, That's bro. His <laughs> hey man, the moment I saw the moment I saw that that picture yeah. of Attack on Titan, out. I was like, I I I know what's going on here. She can draw. I'm like, do you do your own animations for your videos? 
Um, yeah, that's uh, Black Sea, and both both Black Sea and Mr. Astronomy are little doodles that I did on my uh, laptop. Yeah. That's awesome. That's awesome. I, I, I had a feeling, and I, and I kind of saw it, and I was just like, I feel like she has an anime. I'm like, I feel like she's, well, manga. Yeah. Proper, proper term is manga, to be honest. Yes, you're right. Um, but yeah, dude, it sounds phenomenal. Uh, yeah, Pale Blood sounds like it's going to be a great anime. Like, keep doing it. Like, how do, do you have a release date for it? Do you have any time schedule thing for it? You're just kind of like, you know, it's my baby. I'm going to nurture it. I'm going to grow it. And when it's, you know, ready to take on the world, it will. Absolutely not. I have no, I have no idea what I'm going to release it because the thing is, what's it called? I don't have the full story like fully written yet. I just have the premise and like, I just have like these, like all of these elements that I can like work together. But when it comes to story writing, I get like scared because like I have all of these ideas, but I don't know how to like work them together like seamlessly, you know, like I don't cool. want plot holes as a, like as a story writer, I am terrified of plot holes and like, I just want, I just want to create this like beautiful, like cohesive story that like, like, you know, kind of makes that moves people and like gives them like, gives them that, like the thing they need to think about like the world. Because like much as, much as Pale Blood is kind of like fantastical and mystical and it's thing, it's also really grounded. And I want it to kind of give that vibe where I want people to think about, think about Pale Blood and then look at the real world, look at the similarities because like I want that to be like the main kind of focus. Like uh, I love the I love story writing and character writing, but when it comes to what I want Pale Blood to achieve, I want it to achieve how I want it to achieve the thought of how this world is and how like society is and how like you know kind of everything works together in this kind of strange way where some people are really like kind of controlling everything and yes. like. Everyone is kind of just puppets, you know, and it's just like I want, I want that. It's just yeah, it's a lot. No, it <laughs> is a lot. To, to, like you said, creating, creating a creative world that still has some cohesiveness b between all of it is is really is really the hardest task of, of a writer. And you know, it's you. I mean, you're on the right path, dude. Like you stick with it. Like you obviously have. Amazing characters fleshed out. I mean, we just spent, I don't know, better uh, a good half of this interview talking about the anime yeah. alone, which I am very ha thankful for because, I mean, yeah, like, it's it's awesome to see you doing so many creative things and seeing you kind of branch out and kind of really take on this, like you said, really take on this, this uh, I don't know if you want to call it a hymn or an ode to the, to the world we live in today, where you're really kind of making it kind of mirror what we're going on. But, like, Obviously, we, we kind of live in that kind of, I mean, obviously, when you think about it, we live in that kind of a world where it's, you know, it's a class system. No matter how much we try to ignore it and say that, oh, that doesn't exist here, that doesn't exist there, it only exists other places, it exists everywhere. And, like, you know, it, it's what it is. It's the rich and the poor, you know, and, and yeah, there's you, not really you see a middle it, ground. There's not really a middle ground. Not, not, anymore, really a, not anymore. Yeah, there's no there's no middle ground to play and do keep doing it because we need more some We need more things like that where... People are really looking into it. It really touches them to the point where they look into themselves and look into like everything else around them and start asking questions and the right questions, you know? And it's crazy, like I said, like I know I mentioned this earlier, but it's crazy to think that it, that you're only 17 years old and you have all this creative process going in your head all at one time when it comes to music and the, the anime and all the creative creative activities you're doing all at once. That's that's crazy. Cause I'm I'm like 12 years older than you, 13 yeah. years older than yeah. you. And I, like I said, when it comes to, I think, I guess my outlet is YouTube. But other than that, like, I love dancing. I mean, I used to be into, like, you know, going out and, you know, enjoying, you know, that creative, uh, I guess that creative outlet was dancing at, at one point. I don't want to say clubs because I was a part of a dance crew as well in high school and college as well, Nick. All right, and you know this. He was. He was part of Latin Explosion. They did yeah. a lot of cool dances, a lot of uh, Latino inspired stuff right. like that. But um, one thing I wanted to get into was uh, if you can have your fans remember one thing about you, what would it be? Huh? That's a that's a really weird question. Like that's a good question, but I've never actually thought of it. Um, it could be uh, anything. <laughs> take your time. If you want to yeah, think about your it. Take your time. Yeah. No rush. I want to want my friends to remember that I am a that I am a real person, because a lot of 
Because a lot of, what's it called? A lot of artists and a lot of, like, celebrities, they have fans that don't really think of them as, like, actual people. And they just think of them as this kind of poster. This kind of, like, entity that isn't really real and just kind of on the screen. Just kind of a character. A character that, like, you know, they can relate to. Kind of like, kind of like how people who love anime look at anime characters. It's basically the same thing. Because yeah. you never see that celebrity out in public. You never see you never see that artist go into a Walmart 99% of the time. Maybe because, you know, they're kind of scared of photos or something. But, like, I want all of my fans to remember that I'm just a kid at the end of the day. I'm not some, like, I'm not some character that somebody else created. I'm, like, I'm myself. And I'm a human being just like everybody else. And I just want to live my life as like, you know, a regular human. And that may be kind of different from, you know, the norm where everyone's working a nine to five, but like regardless of how I work and how I live my life, I am still like just as like just as human as like, anybody else. And that's like really all I that is that is such a sobering answer. That's a wonderful thing because like you said, I feel like people forget they they almost they they put their own what's the word they put their own ideals onto you and expect you as an artist to respect that or to have the same one because they think of you in this light and that's just right. everybody's a human being. That is when it comes down to dude, it. Dude, like I we've we've heard answers to that and that is by far leaps and bounds one of the most realist answers i can possibly say to that question like that was wow like we used to we were doing the fun questions but that got real like, right. really quick that, <laughs> that was that, awesome that, was, that hit the start that was that was dude like that really made me think and i was like whoa dude like you <laughs> dude you're 17 and what is going on like, i was like oh my god that was what i was Jesus Christ, that's like, A1 it, it right there. It shows you the upbringing, Dude, brother. Yeah, man. It shows like, you, like, pretty much where she comes from. And, I mean, it's, it's also her brother. You guys have an amazing family. Brain. And to, like, have that kind of support and kind and of have that. And we see it. Trust me. It's, it doesn't go unnoticed. It like, does not, man. That's... When, I mean, a, a, a fan of Easy, a fan of yours, like, you also, you know, you, you treat them like a human being. You don't treat them like, oh, I'm better than you because I'm an artist. Some artists have that mindset. It doesn't matter how old you are. It doesn't matter the age. It, ma it has that mindset of like, oh, the, the ego gets to them. We literally talked about it earlier, how some artists will go out and like, they'll like avoid people. They'll avoid their fans. Whereas like you guys, you're like, no, like, you know, if we're out here and we're like doing a thing, come up to us, come talk to us. Like, we'll be happy to yeah. conversate with you and do a whole and I thing. I saw a few videos of Easy Mel with a... a a few of his fans in the Philippines like the other day. And I was like, wow, that's amazing. Cause I don't see artists that do that, but I see that you guys come from a, a different upbringing than most, you know? And when it comes to that, you guys, you guys show, what is that sound? It's fireworks. Sorry. It's oh, almost okay. the 4th of July here in the States. <laughs> They're blowing off fireworks hey, bro, on the outside. Sound? So oh, sorry. Don't worry, I don't hear it. It's it distracting. Worry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Chris. Know, hey, right. stop it. Like, what do you want me to do? <laughs> Uh, hey, I'm sorry. Hey, take the fire over there. Stop. But um, pretty much, I, I I just like that you guys actually care for your fans, you know, and that's that doesn't really come too too far often in the in the states. That's especially. that's very true. That's very very true. Yeah. So, so yeah, beautiful answer. That was goddamn gorgeous. Thank you. Pardon my French, but that was that was wonderful. That was to remember that to remember that you're a real human being and that you have emotions, you have your own feelings, you have your times, you have your days. She goes through it like uh, everybody other, else. Every uh, everybody, everybody else, man. You know, how do you top that? Jesus Christ. Um. Wow. You can't. Yeah. No. There's no. There's no freaking so, way, man. Jesus. So, so now we're gonna uh, go. I know we talked about fans actually, so this ties in really well with this. And now we could go into the fan questions. So this was asked by J M. Uh, she's Shout a out J M. Yo, huge fan of y'all. So she said, "How did you come up with?" Dysthermia, what's the story behind it? Oh, so so dysthymia, the word dysthymia is actually, I think is actually pronounced dysthymia. Um, it's actually a medical term describing uh, a serious, like a, uh, what's it called? Uh, like a chronic case of depression, if I remember correctly. Mm -hmm. um, it's 
like let me actually just search it up because actually it's funny that you said that because uh I, I, when I was hearing the song, I mean, it, it pretty much expressed what you just said. It was yeah. going through like very hard, deep depression. Um, and I think it also they like, said something about like the, you know, uh, the prescription, prescription and stuff like that going back in the What's it called? Yeah. It's a, uh, it's called, it's also called persistent depressive disorder. So it is a chronic, uh, it's a chronic term. And the thing is, what's it called? All of, uh, all of the symptoms that like i don't i haven't been to the doctor in years <laughs> so i haven't been to the doctor in years so i haven't you know i haven't talked to like anyone but i can definitely say that i'm i i wasn't in the you know pristine mental state for four years like uh before now like before like kind of like this area in time i was i was like i wouldn't like for there was times for for days I wouldn't I wouldn't sleep, I wouldn't like I would barely drink water, I would barely eat, and I would like you know I was just kind of I was not okay. I knew I wasn't okay, and I was like I was kind of begging for somebody to kind of like you know tell me it was okay, and kind of like I was in that state where I was like I was going through cycles of like kind of telling myself that. I wasn't good enough. I was worthless, and like all of those negative things that I fed to my head, and it was it was horrible because I would I would continuously do that, and I wouldn't stop because they're like I couldn't stop. It was it was all in my head, and like nobody could hear what I wanted to say, and yeah. it was just like it was I was always alone, and I wouldn't I wouldn't like I I, I couldn't really like keep friends. I never trusted anybody. So, like, I had the worst trust issues back then, and I mean, I mean, I still have trust issues, but it's like, it's not, it's just a thing now, That's but weird. that also helped a lot because I never, I never trusted any of my friends to tell them how I felt about things. I would always just tell them, oh, I'm sad. And then the thing is, because of this, like, because of this uh, stigma around, like, young people, everyone, everyone's sad, you know, all yep. the kids are depressed. And what's it called? Like all of the kids are like, oh yeah, I'm sad too, you know? Take some drugs or whatever. And I'm just like, I'm just like, okay. So I guess my problems aren't that big. And so I just kind of kept to myself. I never really thought of my problems as anything like, you know, immensely big. And I never, mm -hmm. but like I heard about like what depression was and how it actually was like a thing that affected people. And uh, what's it called? I, I researched on it, like I, I wouldn't call I wouldn't call it a self diagnosis, but I definitely say that I that I ticked kind of all the boxes for the what's it called the disorder of dysthymia, and I was like like I was kind of like it kind of felt kind of like freeing to kind of like ident like identify that I was going through something that was a problem. It was a problem, and it wasn't just me being the problem, and yep. it was something. I was going through and it wasn't something that should have been kind of swept to the side kind of swept away it wasn't important I didn't like I kind of thought of it as important at that point it was something that was a problem but I still didn't go to the doctor <laughs> <laughs> it happens well you know what I, I am glad I really am glad to hear that you got out of that because I um I, I recently lost a friend last year to uh, you know, depressive things and they, you know, decided that, you know, it, what they didn't want to be on the surf anymore. And I know that Chris has lost a friend before and is like two to the same exact thing. So to hear that you got through that and have been able to kind of build yourself up to be able to get out of that mindset and pull yourself away from there. Self that's a wonderful thing. Self-diagnosis. I mean, I mean, hey, so that's, so that's the best thing. You know what I mean? Like, um, I, I, I feel like we, we all go through stages of depression, but I feel like it definitely affects others more than more than some. And I feel like uh, understanding it and accepting the fact that, you know, like, it's something that is, you know, a disease and it's okay to have it. It's not something that's going to, you know, be bad for anybody. It's really just, it's really just bad on myself, you know, but it, as long as I have people, like you said, who can tell me it's going to be okay and there, that you have a support group who's always going to be there for you, that you can see that life, you know, that's how you can pull yourself through. So that's, 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 that's amazing. That, that really, that really did make me go back to a certain thing. And to hear you say that, I'm, I'm so happy because the world's always a better place with more people in it, especially like you. He's a bright and vibrant person and being so full of creativity and so full of, of, of who you are as a person and being so accepting of yourself. 
I think we need more people like that who are able to sit there and say, you know what, hey, I can I can admit to this and I can admit to that and I can say this is what I am and this is what I'm not. Yeah. So keep Especially doing that. Uh, at an early age, going through Jesus Christ, all yeah. those uh, emotions and then, you know the oppressive uh, stage, like yeah. that's not easy to mm-hmm. get out of. I mean, yeah. honestly, I, I never. I, I don't know. It could almost I, feel impossible for some. I, I was gonna say, like, I know, like when I, I feel like when I got older, maybe I had a few depressing years. But I also self-diagnosed myself, like, and, and got out of that funk. Exactly. Sometimes you just need a, a reason, or or or, or just yeah. like a. Um, you know, it's, it's different for everybody. Sometimes yeah, you know, yeah. some people, some people, they have it so bad where you know, sometimes, sometimes the medication it's is hard. not is, is not yeah, the wrong decision. It's, it's the right, right decision. But, sometimes you know. Yeah. Everyone's different and everybody has their own way of coping. And it's a wonderful thing that you found your music yeah. and your anime and everything else that you have where creative wise, to be able to express yourself and feel cool with it, you know? And that's, and that's, I feel like it's kind of what we do I here like, a lot of the time too, because we get to come on here and gab your ear off about our own personal problems yeah. and just have a good time and talk about it, you know, and also hear other people's experiences in life or in life. And it, it really helps you kind of put things into perspective for yourself. So that's yeah. wonderful. I'm so glad to hear that. Um, yeah. I mean, I guess to go on to the next question, um, yeah, this is changing, changing, changing <laughs> gears here, completely pulling a 180 on you right now. Yeah. Um, this was asked by Malou. Shout out Malou. Shout out to Malou. We uh, love you. But, uh, she asked, do you see yourself auditioning for America's Got Talent because Malou thinks you'd be a perfect fit? Thank you. Um, no. We agree as well. Oh. No. What's it called? Um, like I, when I was like a little, when I was a bit younger, I was thinking of like auditioning for The Voice and like all those things. And but now I, I like I really just want to take music as a as a job. I really just like mm. I don't want to go to like competitions and stuff. Like I want to mm-hmm. get, I want to do concerts. I want to like, I want to record my own stuff. I don't want to, I don't want to win a competition and then win a record label. I'm fine with doing everything myself like i already have like help from my family they've supported me through all this time and like like because of all the what's it called because of all the uh long-term suffering that i had for like four years i never actually took it they would always tell me hey you know you're the like if you want to record the recording equipment is right there you know you can you can do it whatever you want and i never did it because like I always felt so so incompetent and I couldn't do anything, and now I'm a lot better and like I feel like I really just want to take everything, every chance that I have right now, and I just want to like I just want to you know like kind of pull myself up like out of you know everything that I've been through and just kind of take take the take my chance, kind of yeah you know yeah. Hey, you you took your chance and it's and it's going really well for you. We're happy to see that. It's a beautiful thing that you're doing that. And I and you know I have this, obviously I agree. I I think you're I think you're better off not competing because you you beat you beat to your own drum. And who's to say that anyone else who's big or has an name for themselves has the right to judge you on how you want to do your own music? Um, I, I think you win for you know just for you know just saying just throwing it out. I think you win. You know, just saying. She'll definitely be um, a finalist, and she will win. Yeah, definitely. without a doubt. But I, I definitely do have to say I agree with you. I'm glad that you're doing that. I'm sure all your fans agree. I'm sure Malou can agree, and she can understand yeah. exactly what you mean by that. Because yeah, it's. I mean, just talking today, it's it's. This is this has been an awesome experience, I think, for for both of us over here. Um, thank you, like, dude, thank you so much for giving us the time of day to to talk to you and, and to kind of you know break down. And I really hope I really hope that all the fans appreciate this. And I hope everybody watches this because I feel like you 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 have a lot to say, and people need to hear it. Thank you so much. Yeah, I, I we definitely uh, appreciate you for giving us the opportunity to interview you. Um, you know, it's a, it's been a blessing and it's been a joy to actually get to have know you on here. As yeah, a, dude. A personal, oh my god, a personal connection. I feel like you know now we know a little bit, a lot more actually. Now yes. a, bit, a lot more about Rain or Ray. Now. And, uh, and La Familia knows now too. Yeah, uh, Ray. We know a lot more about you now. We're we're on, we're on a nickname basis now. Okay, right. you can call me Fibar. You can call him Javier. You're Ray now. You know what I'm saying? It's we're we're friends now. You're 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 stapled in here in the La Familia. Let me tell you that. Um, That'd but so yeah, again. I, no, thank you. Truly, thank you. Like all, all the things go out to you. Keep producing your music. Keep doing what you do because you're on the road to exactly where you want to be. And, I, and we wish you're on a beautiful path to yeah, greatness. Dude, for real, for real. You and the family are, are 
freaking amazing. I mean, we met your father, we met Easy Mill, and now we actually get to know you. And it's like, man, I feel like y'all family, you know? Like, to, uh, yeah, to us, it's family. like we feel like we can just call you guys and just talk y'all to you guys. About La Familia. Anything. Yeah, for real. Yeah. All right. <laughs> It, La Familia wouldn't be here without without you guys, in all, in all honesty. So we do Thank appreciate it. Thank you for inviting me here so much. That of course. That was not English. It's okay. It's fine. <laughs> people, people, hey. people who are going to watch us don't speak English. You right. know what I'm saying? Like, they don't hey, speak Japanese English in English. Tagalo like, is okay by us, right? I'm so, not, hey, I'm yeah, you want to address the fans real quick? Let, yeah, let everybody speak know. To speak to the fans real fast. If you need to speak to Tagalo or English, it doesn't matter. Have it's, your moment. This it's is all your, you. This is your moment. I suck Tagalo. I actually do. I'm really bad at it. But, <laughs> hello, everyone. Uh, uh, hi. <laughs> <laughs> You're good. Uh, I... I I hope you guys enjoyed um, listening to me answering questions and stuff. Uh, yeah. Hi. <laughs> guys, again, we hope you guys enjoyed this interview. It was a pleasure having Rain on. Yes. As always, guys, you may know what to do. Like, comment, subscribe, subscribe. and join, join La, La Familia. Familia. We're going to catch you next time, guys, and we're out of here. Peace. Bye -bye.